This is Sound Off 60, Southwest Louisiana's premier sports show. Sound Off 60 is presented by Merchants and Farmers Bank, where your future is our history. Also presented by Walk Ons Bistro and Bar, home of Sound Off 60. Here are the guys, Rick, Scooter, and Kevin. Pigs have not flown anywhere the, near the state of Louisiana since like 2010, of course, that Super Bowl. But now we know that football shoes can fly as well, right? <laughs> Welcome back to Sound Off 60. That would be get Jim Gazzola sitting in for Kevin Gidry. Jim coming to us from Southwest uh, Louisiana Sports. Show back on the air, by the way. Yes, yes. La last week started, you got it rolling. Oh, uh, well, we got it going. You got it going. You got it going right here on, C <laughs> on, on CBS Lake Charles. Hobbs again in second base, Sarah here. For the next 30 or 60 minutes, depending on the version of the show you're going to catch, you know all about that. We've got a lot to discuss. Something tells me you guys are biting at the bit. All right, we've got topics. Could be, could be the biggest LSU upset at least in the last 20 years, beating Florida, especially in the context of everything going it's, it's, further no than that. There's no question the last 20 years. The last 20 years. Number yeah, six, I would Florida. Go, I mean, I've been covering LSU 40 years, and I would put it right there. And you did not see this coming. Oh, no. No. Did you see oh. this coming? <laughs> No, were those Air Jordans, by the way? Huh? That flew were those no. Air Jordans? Air Taylors. Air, 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 Air Taylors. Oh, that's, that, that's crazy. That, that, we got to get into that. The whole flying shoe thing, that has to. I mean, look, the last two or three years, the, the lore of LSU football, that, that, that book, if you will, and this one just add right to it. I mean, you know, you know it better mm -hmm. than uh, this chapter upon chapter of LSU football, and this is. This was just this was just and, crazy. You know, a couple right. of, oh, oh, we'll get into. You it were going to get into it in a little bit. Saints, of course, the losing streak uh, hits a wall in Philadelphia. We have got three high school teams, so those subjects and a whole lot more. Southland Conference, we're going to get into. So hang with us. You don't want to miss this conversation. Oh, let's go there. All right, senior, senior, defensive back for the Florida Gators, throws a shoe, and extends a drive. Everybody saw the game. A senior. And again, we do this every week, right, Hobbs? We've been doing it, it seems like every how do these knuckleheads continue to make these mistakes? <clears throat> Discipline, culture, emotion, call it what you will. It should not happen. It reminds me a lot of the Roger Lost Clemens the throwing the bat. Remember yeah. Roger Clemens I threw the bat? About that yeah. One. Yeah. It just it was like he just lost his mind for a second. <laughs> Lost his mind. I d I I don't know. I've I've I'm, I'm still flabbergasted about it. And I I, I guarantee you. If you asked that kid, what were you thinking? He'd say, I have no idea. I have no idea. Marco Cause, Wilson, cause I think it yes. did not look particularly like toning to me. He just looked like he casually yeah, threw yeah, it he, around. Yeah, emotion. He, yeah, he his emotion got the best of him. He made the plan. He yeah, stopped, uh, yeah. supposedly stopped the drive, which was leading to oh, be a game-winning drive for LSU. Not supposedly. And, yeah. 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 <laughs> throws it but you I see mean, it we've seen it when guys tackle guys by the feet and then they kind of throw the feet up and well exactly. this guy he got the shoe and he threw it he just carried a little further maybe if he would have just maybe tossed it at the guy but did he have to do the, the you know the outfield throw like, 20 like yards i down said the field? you know i'm sure uh, 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 dan mullen is sitting there before the game thinking okay did i go over every do's and don'ts of this game and probably thinking he had <laughs> Yeah, we, this not one. this we, one. We look, well, look at not Trevor Bauer threw the baseball over the outfield two years ago. It, 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 this guy's a kid. He's 21 years old. He you lost know, his head for a minute. They, they had a sliver of a chance to get into the to the college football. Oh, no, they had their they, the Florida Gators. They had destiny in their hands. Yeah. Well, at least they control their they, own. They day. control. Yeah. They control. That's gone. You lose to to an LSU program that is just a, a dumpster fire. A dumpster fire with the, well, with I what's think it going was, on. <laughs> On and off the field yeah. at LSU with these allegations and everything else. Bo Pelini, uh, the coaching staff besieged. Yeah. And, and, and you lose, what, 23 and a half point underdog? Uh, granted, it was a tight game and he throw and it, you know, leads to the game winning field goal. I mean, this is, this, you can't write this stuff. Well, you, can't you, write you, this got, stuff. you do have a situation where they probably shouldn't have been 23 and a half point well, underdog. Well, it doesn't matter. You are. And you are. <laughs> By halftime, I think we knew the difference between uh, Alabama and Florida was quite, uh, quite substantial. Well, yeah, yeah. but you know, each game takes on each its game own. does. That doesn't mean Florida can't play good against Alabama. Right. No, I don't think they can beat Alabama, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean they can't play. Yeah, 
you know, uh, a lot better. L LSU has been besieged by this as well. And I don't want to harp on these kids because we, we'd like to, we like to maybe defend some of the youngsters out there. But okay, Marco Wilson, you know, huge mistake. Eli Ricks, pick six. He could have got a Tony. What is he doing? Yeah, he could have got a. I know. Could have easily got a Tony. That secondary sucks all year, and he's going to taunt because he gets a pick six. Well, that's, well, well, that's, that's what the world we live in. He hadn't been there. That's his second. I know, pick and six. he did. This is his second time doing that. And of course, what Booty last week kind of redeemed yeah. himself this week. Played a great game. He didn't. He didn't have any. But we at, that's he a, actually played pretty good last week when he wasn't when dropping he wasn't the ball. ball. That's the culture line. we live in, though. What is it? That's got to drive. What is it? Crazy. Is it? Is it a lack of discipline? Is it? Is it these guys a little too much social? You don't media? see. You don't see it happening in Alabama too often. True. Uh, that's why I raised the question. Is it? Culture? Yeah, I think is there's. I think there's. It, I think there's a cockiness and stuff to some cultures that don't win every year and yeah, things. Yeah. But LSU should be above that. I agree. Oh, I couldn't agree. More. I agree. You won a national championship last year. Season. But you, again, we. Uh, I've said this before. That group didn't win the national championship, but they're getting credit for it. They're getting credit for it. <laughs> All right. Uh, they, it sure wasn't that group. Not, not that group. No, you're, you're right about that. All right, up against the clock, we're going to take our first break. When we come back, we're going to get into a little bit more on LSU and Florida. But, again, uh, they, they have a shot to go 5-5. Five and five. I saw a winning record a couple of weeks ago. I said, win. You laughed at me. You scoffed at me. But now they got well, a shot to go. It's not a winning record. I know that, but at least it inches a little bit but better. But it's okay. not a losing record. <laughs> it's not a losing I, record. I, I All right, lot to cover ask. here at Sound Off. So stay with us. We're coming back in about two. Stay right there. Sound Off 60 is brought to you by Walk Ons. Bistro and Bar, where great food, your sports, and good times roll. Stay here, the boys will be right back. For nearly 85 years, Merchants and Farmers Bank has provided dependable, personal banking for Central and Southwest Louisiana. I saw your new boat last week, Chuck, looks like fun. We have eight convenient locations, checking and savings accounts, online bill pay, mortgage and personal loans, even a new app that allows you to take a picture of your paycheck and deposit it. Can't wait to see your kitchen remodel, Pam. Come in today to open a personal account. Merchants and Farmers, your future begins with our history. Preparing a meal, it's a lot like preparing for a game. It involves hard work, the right plan, and attention to detail. Great food, that's our passion. A taste of Louisiana, handcrafted from scratch. Walk on, because everyone needs a little playing time. Drew's favorite season? It's seafood lanyard season, only at Walk On. Sound Off 60 presented to you by Merchants and Farmers Bank, locally owned for nearly 90 years, all right, here to serve your uh, personal and commercial banking needs across southwest Louisiana. All right. Before we get into, oh, oh, uh, Jennings head football coach Rusty Phelps, next week. Got to He's tune always in for, good. Got to turn in for Coach Phelps, veteran uh, in, in high school coaching in this area. Great stories the last time we had him here mm -hmm. uh, about uh, Ed Orgeron and Dabo Sweeney, Nick Saban, that whole thing. Rusty Phelps, uh, they, yes, they lost in the quarterfinals, going to be here on the show next week. All right, so that should be a, that should be a treat. Before we get into LSU Florida, all right, I got a little bone to pick, and I know you guys are going to get your swords out. I did not like this freshman tight end, Eric Gilbert, pulling out I don't care for what reason. I don't care if his body well, hurt. That, that I don't is, care if he well, was homesick. the given you reasons. Finished, you finished the season. He, he's not getting ready for the, the draft. No, he's a freshman. COVID is really not an issue. You got two more games. No, it's not, right. it's not, it has nothing to do with COVID. I mean, but, but, but the thing I is, got a problem with that. On the surface, I agree with you. Yeah. But we don't know what the real reason is. No. And so let – and I – He's a 19-year-old kid. The thing I that care. I would temper I that with, if it was that bad, uh, I think Orgeron would be, okay, you don't want to be here, go. Right. But Orgeron made it clear all week that if – Whatever it is, if he gets straightened out in his mm -hmm. head, Orgeron will we'll welcome, welcome him back. back. He's a five-star. 
He's, oh, you, well, of course he's going to. Of course he's going to. Last year's recruiting. recruiting. Yeah. Right, you're right. You, of course you're going to welcome him back. No, not, not always. Not a bit. Uh, well, 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 hold on. Now, was it, how, what beef would this kid have? He's second in receptions going into the, the Florida. He was second in receptions. But There's, if he had not been bad there. for a freshman tight end. That, that if maybe he so had been isn't there, beef. the shoe wouldn't have been there to throw. Okay. Now, they uh, lose. <laughs> well, I don't know. But <laughs> imagine how he's feeling, though. Think about that. His I backup mean, shoe. I know. Yeah, I have no idea what he's going through or what the issue is. It no, may not have nothing to do with football. It maybe may have nothing to do with football. Finish the season. I think we, we look, we, we've all had, we all have kids, right? Finish what you start. Yeah, but we live Finish in a, we, we grew up in a different world. Uh, yeah, I knew I, you guys were going to take that road. I, I'm right. not taking that road. I, but, I but agree I with you, but. That. And, and, and I think a lot of speculation about why he left mm-hmm. led to this whole narrative last week of, man, the coaches are disconnected. Yeah. You've got a bad mm-hmm. locker room. Yeah. Uh, more and more. Oh, so they get to Florida. Two more guys. Mm-hmm. In the uh, can't play one sick uh, Baskerville, mm-hmm. the linebacker, and then uh, Stingley, Stingley star. Uh, you know Stingley tries to warm up, can't play. Mm-hmm. You lose another one to targeting yeah. on the second series. That's not a bad locker room when you can be that depleted. Oh, totally agree. And put up that kind of effort. Totally and agree. And win a game. Totally it, agree. Your totally your agree. action. If there is a major problem, you'll see Wednesday. I, th- I think that will be it. Is if they can keep their recruits, because kids will talk. Okay. By the way. Uh, so I think that's a bigger. I think that yeah. is a problem that can be fixed and right by away. By the way, Orgeron said today he expects 15 to 19 to go ahead and sign Wednesday. Okay. So right. that would be your barometer on. It. People are playing games this week, and we've got what I've always thought was the silly exercise of National Signing Day. Mm-hmm. When they realized teams were going to be, why couldn't they move it back, you know, 1st of January sometime? Because somebody sold some TV rights probably, to be honest with you. Oh, no, it's <laughs> not that big a deal. <laughs> it's not. To me, it's not. I've always thought it's the most overglorified right. day. I, I would argue this was his final win as Orgeron is. Let's, let's go there. Let's pivot away from that subject. Biggest upset, you said, and maybe even beyond 20 years. This was this was a big oh, yeah. game. Yeah. I mean, I, again, I called LSU football a dumpster fire, and it, it was that and maybe even more, you know, going into this. Well, apparently, the whole season, I'm talking apparently about it wasn't quite. I mean, there were problems. Teams have problems. But of course. apparently it wasn't quite the dumpster fire a lot of us assumed it was. Hey. Uh, you don't get that kind of. Focus and mm-hmm. effort from a dumpster fire. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. You, you get the. You also get the fact that they got really embarrassed. And if you have any pride at all, and you get embarrassed as bad as you yeah. did on national TV, yeah. and you get a chance to re. Uh, let's see what they do against Ole Miss. If they give up 55 against Ole Miss, okay. uh-huh. maybe it was more about Florida not playing well. Uh, like, well you, right. Let's but see. I, but even, I, I kind of get a chuckle out. Everybody say, "Well, Bo Pelini, you know, off the, they gave up 600." They have a lot of guys. Oh, no. But oh, no. you offset that with three, three turnovers. turnovers. So let's look turnovers at those three key. turnovers. Yeah. Uh, one was absolute luck. The doink, yeah. doink. Right. I've never seen anything like that yeah. one. Right. Although it was great awareness. It was. The, uh, <laughs> kid I'd never heard of hardly. <laughs> uh, one was just a great play on the fumble. Mm-hmm. Great individual play. And the other one I'd say was the scheme. They, they lured the quarterback. The pick yeah. six was a scheme. Huge play. Huge. Lured him into you a get, trap. You get a different team every week. And this week. You're talking about LSU. Well, everybody does. Okay. You're a different team every week. Florida's saying, hey, Pete, Alabama beat him by 55. We're playing Alabama next week. Their, their focus might not have been great. LSU's focus was better. Right. They made a couple of big plays. And, and they won a game. Mm-hmm. And they got a break to win the game. Yeah. Does that change a program around for a year? It could be something you can build I'm, on. I'm buying in on, on Orgeron saying this was this was uh, foundation building. But you see, you don't. To me, well, this and it showed, and, it, and it, every point was scored by a freshman or a sophomore. Good every point. Every big yeah. play in yeah. that game was by a freshman yeah. or a sophomore. So what Orgeron was trying to say the last few weeks, yeah, this this is a tough year, but you know it's going to get better. Mm-hmm. 
that you know that kind of reaffirmed that we're not as bad as 55 to Alabama. Uh, yeah, that's what he's trying to say. I don't know if you can write this in a script. All right, the fog rolls into the swamp in Gainesville, LSU 23 point. The kid hit a 57 yard field that goal that, is, that you can barely see. Kick? I mean. Career I mean, long? Was it, it not was the longest? right down Broadway. Yeah. The longest in LSU history. Yeah, it was a school record. Yeah. Come on, Gazola. That's, that's tremendous I mean, script. What do you want? I'm thinking, what is going on here in the swamp? Barely see the ball. Well, they're, they're, the upright, well first, first of all, they're a high, they're a high prime, prime program that gets on TV so you can see that. Yeah, yeah. And those things happen when you play in that league. And they're, they've got a lot of talent. Yeah. There's no question they have talent. I the question, it didn't play well the one week. Uh, just, just incredible. Kyle Trash, uh, no no shot at the Heisman. Uh, he might have been. Uh, he probably yeah, played himself probably, out of it. Well, but, yeah. unless he would beat Alabama, yeah. maybe. Uh, he's still got okay, another game. So, so what? Mac Jones? I keep saying Mac Jones, Mac Jones. All year I've been saying Mac Jones. I'm not Mac- voting for either one of them. I'm not allowed to say. Who are you going to vote for? I'm, gonna I'm vote not for? allowed to say. <laughs> Mac Jones, uh, I'm sorry, Mac Jones. I don't think Mac Jones is the best one on that team. Uh, maybe. Uh, All right. Up against the clock, <laughs> the, 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 the state of affairs in the Southland Conference, we get on that and also the Saints lose at Philly and a big one coming up this weekend in the Dome. Stay right here. Offer a more reliable, responsible, intelligent, and connected indoor environment that easily adjusts to homeowner preferences no matter where they are. Uncompromising, unmistakable Luxair. Learn how to become a Luxair dealer by visiting solarsupplyluxair.com. Sixty presented to you by Miller Lite, the original light beer, still 96 calories, great taste. Always enjoy responsibly, especially this time of year during the holidays. All right, uh, before we get into the Saints losing uh, on the road at Philadelphia, let's talk a little bit about the Southland Conference. There are reports that upwards to four, right now, four Texas-based teams are going to opt out very, very soon to the WAC, the Western Athletic Conference. That would be Stephen F. Austin, Abilene Christian, Sam Houston State, and Lamar? Lamar. Okay, the bulk of the Texas side leaving the Southland, all right, that would leave Incarnate Word and Houston Baptist. Perhaps. Leaving the football members of the Southland with six schools, mm-hmm. including Central Arkansas, and now they're, they're eyeballing the Atlantic Sun. Well, they were which, actually the first one to start eyeballing yeah, somebody. Yeah. Guys, where does this leave McNeese? Uh, they're, out on, they're, out on a, they're out on a limb, they're out on a, a plank, and I don't know what they're going to do. Well, what, and what, it doesn't sound like they could follow the Texas schools because that makes that conference, what, 16 yeah, teams? Yeah, I mean, you've got to have an invite for one they, thing. Well, they, they'd like to go to 16 teams, but they want to bring in, one of the teams they want to bring in is, uh, for geographics, is Northern Arizona. Yeah, and it doesn't suit McNeese. Look, let me, let me say no. this for the record right now. I, 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 don't, I don't like, I mean, I understand why, say, the SEC went to 14, but to me, 12 is the the perfect I, I, I like your number. I like your number. Uh, but I sure don't like 16. 16? Holy for, smokes. For an you F- get, FCS. Yeah, you got you two different conferences, in my in my mind, you do. under one conference umbrella. I think that's what you're looking at is two well, divisions. That's right. Let me yeah. state this for the record, guys. And I'm, I'm not a, an economist by, by trade by any stretch of the imagination. But this COVID situation is not going to disappear once the vac- vaccine comes about. This is going to have long-lasting impact on budgets and financial revenue and for, for at least two to three years. 
So you're talking about a Western Athletic Conference. You're talking about teams going every which way. How are they going to How are they going to pay for all that travel? I thought I thought conferences wanted to get more regionalized <coughs> to cut down on travel. I think that's what the divisions come in. Well, okay, there you go. That's what they're going to do. That's what they're going to try to do. All yeah. right. I mean, in effect, it sounds like it would be two conferences. Yeah, it would yeah, be. It it's would. Essentially, it's two conferences okay, in the champion so game. Back to my original question. Who's going to come to the Southland? Where, what's the Southland going to do if you lose all those Texas I mean, schools? What, what, they're gonna be, who, you're going to be hurt. Well, if there? you are trying to stay as compact as you could, I mean, who's there? Who's there? You're basically saying to join the Louisiana schools. Huh, yeah. And I guess uh, Incarnate Word and uh, we'll say Houston Baptist. Houston Baptist. Ooh, that excites me. UL Monroe. UL Monroe. What else you got? What? If they decide to come back down. Well, they, they they look like they look they like look like they might. And Has any school ever done that? Up and down? Gosh, dog, I have to. Man, I don't know if anyone's ever gone back. Well, let's see. There was well, they were FCS, one AA, Monroe. They won a national title. Yeah, right yeah. Well, a lot of them went to FCS, and now you're saying come back down. Has any school ever come back? I, Dra- I would say I would a Drake or a Dayton, maybe. No, this is. I think it's probably happened, but I can't think. Of this it. is this is obviously not what the Southern Conference needs or wants. This is not what McNeese needs or wants. I thought because to me, Stephen F. Austin and Sam Houston, those two in particular, they they were kind of the the bell. Well, they and they also the like the and the Lamar Texas and side. Lamar for a rivalry and a uh, neighborhood Lamar rivalry. For a rivalry. I'm not much into the Lamar rivalry. Yeah, but at least you drew crowds. It, you're right. You're right. You're right. All right. I just so, wonder yeah, you got to get some crowds. This goes back to there was kind of a philosophical split when the Southland was deciding what to do about football. And COVID this year. Uh, That's part of it, I'm sure. Uh I think there's also a couple of personalities that are pushing this that have relationships on the Texas side. Mm -hmm. I've heard that it's kind of a a personal thing that a couple guys – are together and wanting to do it, and they have ties throughout the four. Uh, I believe the, the the feeling the feeling from this panel is this could happen by years in, the announcement. This could happen by weeks in. Yeah, by weeks in. From what I've heard. All right, we'll keep you abreast of, of this developing story. Let's go to the Saints quickly at Philadelphia. All right, look, it was going to end. You would hope it not end against an NFC East team, a struggling team, uh, 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 you know, riddled with injuries, and with yet another rookie quarterback making his first start. Remember well, Robert? You know remember same, Robert uh, Griffin? The, oh, yeah. It's a this thing. <laughs> In fact, that's why I I was probably the only person scared for the Saints because it would have been so typical when the Broncos had to use the practice squad ride receiver at quarterback. I said, oh, my God, he'll throw for 400. (laughs) (laughs) That didn't happen. It's a bad game because of the timing. Flat flat game, first half, couldn't couldn't be. It happens. Just bad game. Particularly, I mean, the, the worst was that touchdown they scored right before the half. Yeah. It looked like they were trying to run the Didn't clock out. Yeah. It looked like they were trying to run the clock yeah. out. Yeah. And then they came back and got and the ball back. And almost scored, a, what, a 76-yard yeah. touchdown? And then drove right down the field and missed yeah. the field goal. Otherwise, and they would have well, scored again. Well, Lutz missing a, a pretty much a chip field goal. Uh, you know. Well, there have been warning signs about the Saints. They had the overtime game in Chicago. I got you. They had the game that I they should have lost to the Chargers. Those aren't great teams. No, no. Uh, and, no, and, but so you, you play you bad still, for a week. you got you got to win with a D game sometimes. You go in and play D. D, D well, the other guys win. are getting paid. You know, so, oh, all right, so uh, Kansas just what City. I, I wasn't on the Zoom call, but uh, Peyton today, from what I saw, oh, he was mad. Yeah, I mean, he should well be. He was. He but, you, well you be. know, and uh, the, if you think about it, it's a little bit like that Florida game, LSU-Florida game. Uh, there were the Saints. I mean, down 17 to nothing, could not have played worse. Yeah. But they get right right on the yeah, verge yeah, there yeah. in the second yeah. half. Then they fall. Same thing. LSU had mm-hmm. some breaks. They get, looks like Florida has yeah. gotten their act together mm-hmm. in, the, in the second half, and they don't finish yeah, the deal. They don't finish it. All the right, Saints so didn't gotcha. finish the deal. In the dome. And how they did not recover that onside kick, maybe oh, one of the God. best onside kicks I have ever seen. Yeah, but yeah. they didn't know it hit the foot, though. But <laughs> it was there. Somebody said, scream, ball, ball, ball. And there was two Saints right there, and it just, it just, they well, just I mean, didn't get it. They were going it. for it. They just didn't I mean, get it. Whether they, they knew it hit the foot All right, or not, Gazzola, how do you beat the it. Chiefs in the Dome? You don't. Uh-oh. Thank oh, you think, for that. Because I think the Saints will play you can, much They'll uh, play better. They, look, this is still I don't think you beat the them. number one rated defense now because they gave up so many rushing yards, but a very, very good defense. Kansas City, look, they can score well, at Kansas will, City's the so best smart. offense in football. They're yeah. the best offense in football. No doubt about it. You have to score. You're going to have to score some points. Um 
You're, you're not going to be able to win. It's not going to be 17-14. No. You're going to have to go out. You're going to have to score touchdowns. You can't settle for field goals. All right, before we go, though, if Drew Brees is physically ready, do you play him or not? I don't think he's going to be. They, I, they're I can't they're acting like I, – I wouldn't – the last thing they need to do is rush him. I agree. Stay with Hill. Stay with Hill. If he's healthy, you play him, but if he's, not if he's not 100%. No, not if he's 100%. Because you're going nowhere in the playoffs right, without him. against the clock. We're coming right back in about a minute and a half. There with you. You're right. <laughs> the winner is the dog with antioxidant vitamin C. Given the choice, why wouldn't you choose the one with antioxidant vitamin C? Choose Vizzy Hard Seltzer. Preparing a meal. It's a lot like preparing for a game. It involves hard work, the right plan, and attention to detail. Great food, that's our passion. A taste of Louisiana, handcrafted from scratch. Walk on, because everyone needs a little playing time. Drew's favorite season? It's seafood lanyap season, only at walk on for nearly 85 years, Merchants and Farmers Bank has provided dependable, personal banking for Central and Southwest Louisiana. I saw your new boat last week, Chuck. Looks like fun. We have eight convenient locations, checking and savings accounts, online bill pay, mortgage and personal loans, even a new app that allows you to take a picture of your paycheck and deposit it. Can't wait to see your kitchen remodel, Pam. Come in today to open a personal account. Merchants and Farmers, your future begins with our history. Offer a more reliable, responsible, intelligent, and connected indoor environment that easily adjusts to homeowner preferences no matter where they are. Uncompromising, unmistakable Luxair. Learn how to become a Luxair dealer by visiting solarsupplyluxair.com. Yes! When it comes to Sunday, choose the right couch. Here's to the original light beer. It's Miller time. Sound off 60 presented to you by Solar Supply, the Gulf Coast leading in heating and air conditioning supplies. Proud corporate sponsor of McNeese Sports. That would be Solar Supply. Uh, next segment, we'll get into the McNeese situation, Southland Conference, a little upheaval going on. What's going on with the SLC? We'll hearken back to some conversations that we had with now full-time McNeese Athletic Director Heath Schroyer about two weeks ago about sports getting cut, sports staying, you know, that whole thing. We'll get into that in the next segment. Let's get back to LSU in Florida. Huge, huge upset, huge win, huge on, the, on, on this program. Hobbs, give us some perspective. In the context of this year, with the up and down, with the Bo Pelini, they need with, let me finish now, okay. with the USA report, with the developments, with the no bowl, the imposed sanctions for booster payouts. If you well, follow self it in the self-imposed the one year say. All right, cynical man. Let, let, I'm, I'm going to give you the floor for a little bit. But this win at this time over a number, a legitimate, at least this year, a legitimate six-ranked team in the Florida Gators. The impact yeah, on this program. Yeah, and that was because if you think about it, this whole year, it's just been one thing after another, after another, after another. In every program and in they, every conference. The, you know, in, at the end of the year, they're still going to be at best five and five. Mm -hmm. But at least they do have that one bright moment yeah. for the season. The shining moment. Yeah, you're right. You know, something you're to right. put on their highlight reel. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All it's right. got something for the highlight reel. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and and I, I think we talked a little about it before. I mean, I give Ogeron a lot of credit. Uh for that game because because he he did keep those kids together mm -hmm. and it, it was laughable the the squad he took to Florida yeah was it one player above the minimum right or was it two yeah one well and I think that was before they actually lost two during warm up yeah uh, so you know actually a little bit below that yeah I, I I don't put a lot of stock in that you know. How many scholarship 53, players? 53, 54, 54, whatever it is. It, you know, it's, you know, where are they missing? Exactly. And for a while, you know, they were drawing straws to get a secondary Correct. out there. And, you know, still gave up, what, 470-something yards. Right. But 
you know, if you keep playing hard, maybe you get a break or two, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know. Orson I will say this. Orson always talks, uh, uh, you know, his low moment before this year, easily, was when they lost to Troy. Troy, yeah. And he always points out, you know, the next week they went down to Gainesville mm -hmm. and won. Mm -hmm. Kind of that was the building block of the program. He'll try it, but this was much bigger to me. What people, what you may forget, that year that after they lost to Troy, LSU and Florida were both scuffling mm -hmm. at the time. Mm -hmm. And it was an ugly game, yeah. and LSU gritted it out and yeah. did sneak out of there with a win. But right. it wasn't a great Florida team they right. beat, and they right. didn't play particularly well to do it. They just mm -hmm. yeah. gutted it out. This, this was a good Florida this, this team. This is a good Florida team, mm -hmm. even in a COVID, a, a COVID yeah. year. All right. So, so all right, uh, uh, Jim, uh, LSU, uh, in the context that I laid out, they go to Florida, the fog rolls in, you know, the, uh, great storyline. I mean, this is Hollywood script kind of stuff, all right? Cade York, the flying shoe, the, 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 the drive, 57 yard field goal, career long, school best. I mean, it was yeah. just, it was unbelievable. Orgeron, I buy into it as well. I think this is a foundation building kind of win on the road to another championship. Look, I'm not get, I, I'm born and raised in Louisiana. I didn't go to LSU, but still, I'm buying into it. That's how big I think Sounds this like win. you did. Sounds well, no, like you I, did. just how big I think this win is to this program at this juncture. I really do. Okay, I flip the script to you. All right, flip it. Let's put it this way. Had they not beaten Florida, the narrative of the season would have been this was an all-time low losing in Alabama okay. that way. Yeah. And that's what you take into the offseason. That's what you would take into the recruiting world. Yes. They were able to at least say, look how we bounce back. We're not going to beat Alabama. We're not ready there yet. Help us get there. Yeah. But we're, we're at least as good as Florida. When you, start, when you start talking to kids about recruiting them, we can beat everybody. Help us get Alabama. They beat if, Alabama last year. Okay. Yeah. They, and they, and they how many times beat, did they lose before that? Uh, but they beat them last year. Also, by with the it, way, when you beat Alabama, it. don't walk around your locker room as a head coach and say the dynasty is over. We're never no, going to no, roll. Tide's no, never going to roll again. You know, he can blame a knucklehead for that. One of his own players taped that. He uh, had the genius to put it on YouTube. Yeah, okay. That I'm, happens I'm with you after on. every night. It does, but this I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. Uh, okay. But I, now let's see what they do. I want to see what they do next week. I want to see what they do against Ole Miss and, because they're going to get a lot of yards given up. How they play, how they if they can mm -hmm. come back when finish 5-5. Five and five. Then I think, okay, he's kind of saved the season with the last two right. wins. Without, if they would have gotten beat by 50 at Florida, then the the train was off the rails for mm -hmm. this year, yeah. and that leads into a whole lot of questions as to what does the NCAA do? How does that affect recruiting? Uh, is are they going to live with just the one year ban, or is the NCAA going to come down on them? What is institutional control? Because that's a scary word. Mm -hmm. How does the basketball situation play? Mm -hmm. uh, you open up a lot of things. You, you solve a lot of problems with that win. And let me go back At to least the, the cosmetics. Let me go back to the win, and let, let's get down to on the turf, if you will. You mentioned it, all right? Uh, the All-American, Stingley out. Baskerville, one of their stars in, in the linebacker, yeah. all right? Uh, uh, Chase gone. Marshall gone. Eric Gilbert now gone. Max oh, Johnson with his... Exactly, the whole, the whole bit. But I'm just your talking third about string recent. quarterback in the uh, game. Uh, yeah, essentially. Uh, Max Johnson with his first career start as a true freshman quarterback. Layer all that in, Jim. Layer all that in. That's one hell of a win. It's on a great the road. week. All right, hell of a win for Orgeron in this program. Now let's let's go there. All right, LSU with the uh, you, you're laughing at the self-imposed bowl ban. Yes. All right. <laughs> I mentioned last week you said they're going bowling. I said, really? What? Well, they were. They were. They were. I, I wasn't even thinking Orgeron about this man. Orgeron had just said I'm that I'm just thinking, morning. what bowl? Orgeron I know. Orgeron had just, so don't blame me. Oh, I'm not saying this, that. This, this bowl season is going to be about your past reputation. Oh, how I'm, many, I'm how many TBIs not, you get I'm on. I'm definitely not watching any of these bowl games like this guy. But what I'm saying is, all right, so, so again, the upheaval in this program. And then they, what, what was it, August? They announced that uh, eight scholarships because of some booster payments. It was August, wasn't it? Uh... Maybe. July, August, yeah. whenever. Uh, late July, I think. All this going on. Yeah. But he holds them together. That's with the Scott impressive Tate thing this week. With all these freshmen. How many freshmen did they play? All this year? 20? 
22? Uh, something like Don't that. talk yeah. to me about Alabama. Don't talk to me about Alabama and not being able to beat Alabama when you have no one. When you lost your starting quarterback in game number three, seasons changed. Seasons changed. You got two freshmen well, coming I, in at quarterback. Come on, guys. That, that had a big effect just because it did look like Miles Brennan, you know, could really could play. play. I thought so yeah. too. Yeah. I in fact, so too. he surprised me. Yeah. All right. You know what I like about Mac Johnson? Now, I, I, you know, he's SEC Offensive Player of the Week. A little much there. Uh, and he missed a lot of reads, it looked like. Yeah. But yeah. I liked his body language. Yeah. Uh, he well, he looked like he owned yeah. the position. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's what you want to see at a quarterback. He owned yeah. the position. Yeah. I, I could see him. Now comes your question. With mm-hmm. all the portal yeah. stuff, who stays? Yeah. yeah, because I'm not sure through all of this. You know, yeah, you've got to have these quarterbacks ready. But it would probably be neater just for Miles Brennan to be able to come back, don't you think? Not to have a full-blown yeah. competition. But well, you're gonna that's have my question. Now. you got a heck of a quarterback arms race brewing here. Brennan's going to come back. Yeah. Some kind of abdominal thing. T.J. Yeah. Finley's got a lot of upside, guys. I like what yes. I saw out of him. Yeah. And this Mac Johnson kid, this so, Johnson kid, if he, he you know, five or ten more you know, pounds on him, he's 6'5". He's a big young man. All, all year, the, the narrative on him has been, well, he's mobile. Yeah. He can move. Yeah. I hadn't really seen it with him coming off the bench. Mm-hmm. No, you he know, looked like he could run. LSU's, you know, either way up or way down. Mm-hmm. But I, I did, I, I did kind of see that I did too. when he he's I did there too. from the start. Look, well, yeah, let's let's remember them. these things work themselves out. Ohio State had three guys one yeah. year; they all went to different places. That's Alabama's right. had kids go everywhere. Yeah, uh, they work themselves out because kids want to play, and there's opportunities from the play. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's also interesting that this year doesn't count on their eligibility. That's yeah. right. All right. Uh, big win on the road. Is Dave Bopal in his job? I don't think so. No. No, I mean. No. I mean, it, it saved him grief for a week. But yeah. let, like I said, they gave up 606 They might yards. give up 400 yards again, in the air this week. Uh, again, oh, with a lot of – And the ground. Uh, uh, with a lot of stars out, though. Let, let's preface it by, you know, he had yeah. a lot – he had, didn't But you've got to give him there. credit. I mean, he pitched it together with Spit and Baylor that's Barker right. in the secondary. That's right. That's and that's right. where they were already weak. Right. And their secondary did make some plays. And and they gave up some big plays, but it didn't look like they were totally lost. You know, the opponent can make good plays. That's too. right. That's right. Yeah. And, and Florida has some. They have some. And let's remember, you're having an entirely different conversation if the kid doesn't throw the shoe. I know <laughs> yeah. that. I know. But, but, but I, well, no, no, no. Hold on now. But it, let's say if Florida won a close one, still LSU went there and and, and matched them toe for toe and, and lost by you know two or three. And points. that's what this program's about. Well, okay, this year it is. This year, this year it is. All right, keys to beating Ole Miss. I mean, Ole Miss, Lane Kiffin, they can you put up a lot score. of points. Score. You got to, score. It's a track meet. Score, now, score, touchdowns. Ole gives up a lot of points. They do too. indeed. They do indeed. Is there going to be 50 points scored by the winner yeah. in this yeah. game? Yeah, yeah. Uh, all the while, the SEC championship game is playing uh, mm-hmm. between uh, Florida and Alabama. Well, no, the LSU's playing the afternoon. Yeah, no, but it's the same night. day as the yeah. SEC championship, but they're going to get the game in, unlike the Big Ten that we'll get to, right? Unlike yeah. the Big Ten. Big Ten's getting the championship game in. I know that, in. but they're not getting a whole lot of games in. No, all right, well, we can take a short pause. We'll come back weather. in about two minutes. Stay right there. Bad weather. For nearly 85 years, Merchants and Farmers Bank has provided dependable, personal banking for Central and Southwest Louisiana. I saw your new boat last week, Chuck. Looks like fun. We have eight convenient locations, checking and savings accounts, online bill pay, mortgage and personal loans, even a new app that allows you to take a picture of your paycheck and deposit it. Can't wait to see your kitchen remodel, Pam. Come in today to open a personal account. Merchants and Farmers, your future begins with our history. Offer a more reliable, responsible, intelligent, and connected indoor environment that easily adjusts to homeowner preferences no matter where they are. Uncompromising, unmistakable Luxair. Learn how to become a Luxair dealer by visiting solarsupplyluxair.com. Preparing a meal. It's a lot like preparing for a game. It involves hard work, the right plan, and attention to detail. Great food, that's our passion. A taste of Louisiana, handcrafted from scratch. Walk-ons, 
because everyone needs a little playing time. Drew's favorite season? It's seafood lanyap season, only at walk on all right, welcome back to the show. Programming note, don't forget, uh, Jennings High, veteran uh, football coach Rusty Phelps will join us on the show next week to talk about the Bulldogs. Great year, didn't get to the semifinals. Great year there. Rusty Phelps, coach from Jennings, will be here next week, and a lot of good stories and stuff like that. Uh, you you want to get on a soapbox uh, about Florida and a well, Big then, Ten, Ohio let me State. Just throw this out. They're in the SEC championship game. Bit. Give yes, them some props. Yes, Did LSU's win over Florida eliminate Ohio State? from playoff contention? Uh, no. It Should did not. Uh, in this year, the way it prove, is, no. Did that not prove there, there was no reason? If you listen to the ACC narrative, mm -hmm. not talking about the Big Ten, there was no reason for LSU and Florida to play. Other than the, the SEC. SEC could have protected Florida the way the ACC is That is, is a very good point. Clemson. And probably what, should what, have, what, as what, it looks what, 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 what Sankey's deal all along. I want to get 10, I want to get 10, I want to get 10. Yeah, I mean, I'm not trying to say the SEC is high and mighty and right? they're morally better or anything. But they did everything they could to play the game. There was no reason for Clemson and Notre Dame not to play last week except they could lose, as Florida found out. Ohio State. Okay. We're, All we're eyes are pointing to you pretty soon. Ohio State. What are you looking at me about? It's what, 5-0? and 5-0. Oh. And, oh. and they think because of the eye test. That's right. You know, they should get a free pass, which the Big Ten gave. I mean, let, me, let me say this. I've been up and down. He's on a soapbox. Well, go I've for been it. up and down on this since it first came yeah. out. Uh, and at first I was like, well, there's going to be bumps in the road. You're going right. to have to make some of it up as you go. And I had no problem with that at first. But this, you know, when you're this blatant with it, really for no reason except trying to protect. And wait, protect no, he's going to go. He's wait, gonna, fill yeah. in the blanks. Protect who? For, Who's protect protect Ohio State? Protect Ohio State. State. Say it. In, okay. a, in a word, protect the conference. Trying right. to get the... The conference in exactly. there. Exactly. Right. I'll give You're you going to get your shot. You, you <laughs> get your, he won't shut up. He's Ohio just going State on. A, he's not going to like the answer, though. <laughs> I'm going to tell you. Against Ohio State. They're 5-0, okay? Right, right, right. All right. Like you just said, Florida proves the more games you play, the more chance you got yeah. to you got to choose. Ohio State has a history. Yes, they do. Of rolling along looking like an NFL team, and all of a sudden they lose bad to yes, Purdue, mm -hmm. bad to Iowa. In, in different years. So you're telling me if they had played eight games, oh, they would be eight? No, mm. don't tell me that. Okay, all right. I'll give you one more. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brad. Was... Is it fair to the rest of the playoff field for Ohio State to only play five, six games? Teams get beat up. Oh, yes. During the course yes. of a year. Ohio State's much fresher. Yes. Going into this playoff. All right. Uh, no, hold, I'm, let me, and I'll say this, and you'll have the floor for maybe 45 seconds, depending on how far you go. I said this early, early on when the Pac-12 and the Big Ten came out and said, we're coming back, but we're only going to be able to play in the Pac-12 situation. Was it six games? Maybe. maybe. And, then, and then the Big Ten, maybe six to eight. That was their hope. And what did I say weeks and weeks ago? How do you judge a, a, a Big Ten school that only maybe plays, say, six or seven games against an SEC that should and is going to work toward getting 10. Is, are you going to have a fair it, comparison? It looks like the and SEC I, is going to play all but one game. All but one game, and I don't think it's fair, it's but in this COVID-induced year, this is what we got. All right, Big Ten apologists, go for it. I don't think Ohio State should get in. Okay. They don't, they, but but oh, you want to make it fair? But. You want to make it fair? Let's uh, make it completely fair. Have an 18 playoff. Uh, I agree. It's a strange year. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. No, but I mean, if that's if that, if, well, if this, if is, this is all year. about if this is all about COVID and you want to make it fair, make it an 18 playoff. <laughs> I don't want an 18 playoff right now. Not right now. I don't. I don't think five games should get you in. That being said, are they one of the four best teams? I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 don't, I don't think, think they've proven their say. point. I don't the problem is they tried to schedule so many games and they didn't. Should they have played somebody because other conferences did do that? Yeah, I think they should have played somebody on Saturday. But that still only gives them six. And if you're playing Rutgers for a second time, does that really matter anyway? So I, no. did they not have any option? Yeah, they should. Yeah, and they what they should have done was 
tell the Big Ten to stuff it and go play Miami of Ohio, who would have played them? Somebody, right? Yeah. Somebody. Okay. So, but yeah. I'm not sure you have four teams that are definitely – I don't think because Florida lost to LSU, that makes anybody in the SEC look better. How do we know Ole Miss wouldn't have scored 50 on A&M? Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. How do we know, you know, A&M barely beat Auburn? Well, let, let's say this, too. A&M Ole Miss is the only SEC game that won't get played this year. That's yeah. pretty good. That's and pretty that, that is very good. good. That's, that that's is pretty good. good. That is very good. I, I, I'll and give I them credit A&M for that. And I guess A&M and Ole Miss could have played and told LSU to go home. But one of them but, yeah. but couldn't so, be So played. you're in this situation of nothing's going to be perfect this year. No. So, play the eight teams if you want to. Play the best four. I don't think it matters who the best four is because I think there's only one <laughs> anyway. Okay. Yeah, but, I love this. If, if I've ever seen a year, it seems like we all know who's going to win this. I don't. Thing. I don't know. And people are clamoring for eight teams. I don't know when somebody gets beat by a team, but like Alabama beat A and M, they deserve a second chance at it more than anybody else. Right. I don't know why Clemson gets a second chance to get back into a playoff picture. I don't, I don't like think those, I would but say, and I'm just playing devil's advocate. I believe that A and M Alabama game was the second game of the it year. It was, good point. And, that, and that's so another A&M's thing. Now, now to defend point. Ohio State a little bit. When A and M played LSU, I was not impressed with. Let's it. let's say another thing though about that. When you when Ella, when Alabama played Ole Miss, that didn't look like a championship team, mm-hmm. right? Ole Miss almost beat them. That was probably so, the most competitive game yeah. in Alabama. So, if you had. look at it, they've improved since then. Mm-hmm. Ohio State never got those three weeks to improve either. They've only played one. They haven't played in three weeks. Odds are, odds are, the Buckeyes are probably worthy of being in the playoff. I don't think we have proof four. of that, though. They, they, they haven't proved it, but odds are But the they essence of sports are. is to play the games I and the competition. That, but based on their history, based on the kind of players they have, based on the coach, based on Justin Fields, odds are. They're better than A&M. No, but if and you're better than Look, I Cincinnati. love the Big Ten. You know that. I, know. I love the Big Ten. I love the Midwest. I like the But Big you Ten. made the decision not to play, so you have to live up to that decision. Yeah, uh, they, were, they were taking the high road, and then they realized they're going to play whether we play or not. Yeah. 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 You know, the ACC and SEC, they're going to play whether well, so you Big got, 12. Really, the only drama that's left going into this weekend, really, if you call it that, is the ACC championship game? Is that it? Big 12, Big 10. Well, yeah, I, I think SEC? it comes. I think it comes. No, I think there's two games that matter. What? I think Northwestern playing close to Ohio State will confuse people. Uh, okay, it'll I'll confuse give you that. people. I'll give you that. And the second one is Notre Dame, and Notre Dame can knock Clemson out of the playoff, which would put Texas A&M definitely in. You and, said Texas A&M was no way they're going to get in. They don't deserve it. Well, I could have been wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the, let's throw this out there. Wait a let's minute. Let's throw this out there. Does A&M? On paper, that's when I thought Florida was gonna. Does A and M on paper? Now, if they 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 lost to Alabama, Florida they beat, but Florida's now gonna end up with three losses. Do they on paper look better than Cincinnati? I haven't seen enough of Cincinnati, but as we go to they break, look good. If if Clemson loses to Notre Dame for a second time with Trevor Lawrence, you're saying they're out. I'm saying they still have a shot to get no. Them. I say still have a shot. No way. Game. But I'm, a, I'm, I'm an eye I'm, test I'm guy. I'm I, I, I'm an I eye think test you. Guy. I think you will see Cincinnati you? crown itself as national well, champion. Well, Central Florida. And then, and, and I'm, I'm giving the Aggies a little bit of credit. I like your point. About why do you get? A, why are you giving Clemson a third shot of beating Notre Dame? Because, because, because how is that fair to Notre because Dame? Because they didn't have. Because they didn't have Trevor Lawrence. The other if kid threw for 440 I know that, yards. But, but he's not Trevor Lawrence. Okay, so now they got. So really, the only game that's got true drama is. Notre Dame and Clemson this weekend, and I think Notre Dame. Watch would Northwestern. Have a I think Notre you Dame know, would have a shot. Everybody's assuming Clemson's going to win that game. I think so. Watch that Northwestern. That is way too big of an assumption. I'm just telling you, watch yeah. Northwestern. West Con- or Ohio State has not played in four weeks. Notre Dame could have a shot at beating Alabama if they meet you, ma- match. I think you. Uh, I think they have. I think they have a shot. I didn't say they could beat them, but they could. So a whole lot of COVID tests going to come up a certain way. And that's <laughs> All right, so happen. much more of the show when we come back in about two. Stay right there. Happy holidays to
Preparing a meal, it's a lot like preparing for a game. It involves hard work, the right plan, and attention to detail. Great food, that's our passion. A taste of Louisiana, handcrafted from scratch. Walk-ons, because everyone needs a little playing time. Drew's favorite season? It's seafood lanyap season, only at Walk-ons. All right, welcome back to the show. Jim Gazzola from Southwest Louisiana Sports has uh, joined us, and I'm glad you have it for the And a new show segment. come out, man. A new, new show. New Pope show. Nation. Look yeah. for Pope uh, Nation. Uh, sitting in for Kevin Guidry, who will be back next week. Uh, give us the times on the shows again. It's, I know it's Friday. I have absolutely no idea. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, come Pope, on, man. Pope Nation, Pope Nation is supposed to be on Wednesdays and Sundays. That'll be myself and Heath Schwer. Oh, mm-hmm. really? Okay, so that's uh, that's a new one. I didn't, yes. uh, I didn't know that. So... Uh, Southwest Louisiana Sports is when? Friday night? Uh, Friday night. Starts Friday night. and then runs periodically. Okay, excellent. Excellent work. All right, check it out on CBS Lake Charles. Uh, all those shows with Jim Gazzola. All right. Um, I and pretty course, up the set. Uh, keep us in mind. All right, continue to watch us here on CBS Lake Charles and also on our Suddenlink Cable Network. Uh, we're Tuesday and Thursday nights and also Saturday at 6.30 and Saturday night How at 11. How do you keep up with all that? Uh, I don't know either. It's just implanted in my head. Uh, you know, all right. Uh, I can't remember one. <laughs> That's why I have my I notes. I got to refer to the notes. All right. Uh, let's talk about McNeese and the Southland Conference deal. First off, uh, the announcement, not a big shock to me. Not a big shock. They have suspended men's and women's golf. Sat here right on this show. He's sure. I challenged him on three different occasions. Are you going to, are any sports on the chopping block? Are you going to reduce salaries? No, no, no. I, I, I appreciate that. I respect him. Probably well, things, things have changed. All right, so they're suspending men's and women's golf. Well, you asked if they were on the chopping season. block. Pardon? You asked if they were on the chopping block. He's going to say, right? he's I gonna say they were suspended. Suspend. I wonder. Isn't that Suspend like, or cancel. Can't I, move up if you I, don't have enough sports. I know that. Isn't know. that like flicking the gnat off your shoulder? If you think about it, you know, you know how much I love golf. Yeah. I'm, I'm not mm-hmm. minimizing that. But they said... The players will keep their scholarship. Yeah. yeah. That's about the only real experience. No, they no that that's no, those two programs travel. Travel and they traveled a lot. Yeah. To small teams. Yeah. I know. They travel some coaches' salary. Granted, the men's coach just left for UTEP, and now you've got a, uh, Coach Flutie going to Compared handle both. It, it does. I, I'd have to look. I'd have to look at the financials. But you know, I don't they know if it's just a gnat off the shoulder. They can find yes. somebody to donate the golf ball. Solar supply. Solar supply. Big yeah. supporter of Matthew Scott. I just don't see where, you know, if they're keeping the scholarship, that's not a big money train but only again just for this year that's why the suspension thing is interesting because it it would be more of a long term if you're okay so here we go back to the southland and back to this story that those four teams could be leaving who outside of ul monroe if the warhawks decide to come down what does well you what does that need i haven't heard anybody else what oh oh, i'm just i'm just theorizing (coughs) you know we we talked about it last week that's been conversed on the people yeah. that are it's still in the conference. They are the, the, the least funded of the Sun Devils. Come on. We all oh, yeah. They're where, the least where, funded where, in where, college where, football. Yeah, where does Monroe where how do you market Monroe? Nothing against Monroe, but how do you market well, it? They, doesn't they, have a lot they of had a major athletic upgrade since the eighties. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, facility. Yeah. Since I, the I, 80s. I, think I give them credit for what they've been able to accomplish so far. So that, that so that's your so they that's why people talk about it is because they look like a practical option. Yeah. The other the other talk, if you really want to get into some conversations about some things, maybe the legislature gets involved. Do you try to bring Grambling and Southern in well, you in know, some way? You know, that was my theory 20 years yeah. ago. Yep, I remember. Uh, yes, we've talked about it several times. Yes, I'm, yes. I, I don't. That that's probably already flown. 20 years ago, it was doable. If you remember, I have, I was adding Grambling Southern. And uh, Jackson State mm-hmm. to what was then the South. It was Who's a now lot coached by look, prime time, right? It was looking yeah, yeah, Deion Sanders. I don't know. I don't, I don't want to know get you right. sidetracked. Continue but, your thought. But, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> those three <laughs> teams back to what, what you had in the Southland. And I think it would have worked. I don't think those three teams at the time were ready, you know, for that level, mm-hmm. but they, I think it would have risen them within a few years, and it would have happened. I, but that is that is an economic opportunity 
for all, for especially Southern and Grambling, but really for these schools to get some economic but, but boost. But think, think, think about, uh, maybe it's not so far-fetched. You say it's an economic boost. I swear it seems to me McNeese gets its biggest crowd. Exactly. When they play a SWAC So wait a minute now. Are you saying, uh, are you saying that, that the SWAC teams, the Jackson State, Alabama State, let's throw them in there, uh, Grambling and Southern. Let's start with Grambling can, and Southern. Okay, you're saying they cannot, and Southern, you don't think they can compete in the Southland of the Louisiana-based schools right now, would, right now? Right now. I think they would have more problems now than they would have 20 years ago. But really? I, you know, I, don't I said feel that, that a minute ago. Okay. And uh, now I'm not so sure. Uh, you know, maybe you kind of caught me off guard with that. But Sorry. I know I got one of the <laughs> great minds thinking alike. No, I'm just saying I, that, I got that is one of the greatest quotes I've ever gotten for a story, and it's not particularly politically correct. But bear with me. When I talked to Marino Kaysen, the late Marino Kaysen was AD at Southern at the time, and I ran my theory back in by him. He said, "What you're saying is very interesting." And it was a little silence, yeah. and I said something to the effect, well, sounds like you might be interested. He said, what you're saying is very interesting. And I said, and he said, well, I just don't know if I want to be known as the brother that broke up the swag. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and, and, and no. maybe 20, 25 years ago, yeah. you couldn't come into this league either with that. Okay. On both ways. But you now have different. A different world we live in. We all know that. Opportunities are there. It could be an economic opportunity. Mm -hmm. I, I think the question is what happens with the Heritage Bowl and that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but they would cut down on their travel. I've, I've always said, when this is all played out, I believe the second group of five, which will be expanded probably to seven or eight leagues, but the, the group after above Division One AA, below Division One, the old Division One, right. whatever it becomes, will be a regional. You'll get a regional television market. You'll get a regional fan base. Imagine if you had, now I know Tech's never going to do it, but imagine if you had Tech, Monroe, Lafayette, McNeese. Well, that's the old Gulf States Conference. The old Gulf States Conference. And you do that, and you get a regional television network, mm -hmm. you get a regional radio network, and you get fans actually coming to games again. Yeah. Yeah. You're probably shooting too high with that one. But well, ta ta I think tech is out. But, world. but but again, I La uh, Lafayette's out. Guys, what, what? Uh, you, you, Lafayette's out now. Yeah. But Lafayette has plays tech, plays Monroe, plays McNeese in a lot of sports. Yeah, yeah. If it, Lafayette lot, is lot. out because McNeese is a lower division, right. you put them in the same division, and they've got to cut their salary. They got to cut their travel money. My yeah, thought on McNeese missed the boat five, six years ago to go to the Sun Belt, to go to, to the lower tier of the FBS. I think the ship has sailed. Economically, I, I disagree I think with it that because sailed. of Coastal Carolina. Uh, pardon? Look at Coastal Carolina. And Coastal Carolina is now in the top ten, are they not? Yes. Yes. Top mm -hmm. Ten. And yes. they, they and their stadium, year, their stadium, year, okay, not, but their stadium is. The they just played BYU on national TV in the middle of the afternoon yes, yes, at yes. a home game mm -hmm. in a stadium that doesn't hold twenty thousand people. Yes. So again, yeah. I think but that it, ship, but that, it was the biggest game in program history yeah. too. Exactly, <laughs> that but ship, that that's the case. Is McNeese has been way yeah. above that in the past. Here, yeah. Here's here's in, in, in our last thirty seconds, Scott. Here's where Sarah's hope was going to be. All right, that somehow maybe I'm dreaming, Texas State. North Texas, you know, it's a possibility. Uh, uh, you know, UTSA would come down to FCS, would be forced to come down to the FCS and have that southern, have that Texas base of the Southland, and then the the then you know, six or seven or eight or whatever, and you would have the Southland would be would be in uh, just augmented by those, and then the te and then the Louisiana side. I love the idea of Grambling and Southern. I do. I would support yeah. it. I would support it. I'm not sure it would work now, but I, I, I know 20 years ago I thought. I think it, it would, would work now, yeah. but again. Think about the economics, guys, and think about COVID, and think about two to three years, and of course this region with the hurricanes and that whole situation. I'm sorry, McNeese, the ship has sailed on FBS. I think it's FCS all the way, and I just don't know where the Southland is going. I don't I think, think you're going to see the same FBS, FCS in three years. I though. think you're right about that. I, I We're out of time. Thanks a lot for sitting in, everybody. Hobbs, Sarah, we'll see you next time. Happy holiday week as we get ready, and stay safe, stay well. We'll see you next time here at Sound Off 60.